When you come to Boeing and our service reps, they know the aircraft. They don't have to call anybody else to get that information because they already know it. Hi, Sydney Friedberg here from Breaking Defense at the Air Force Association uh, Annual Trade Show and Conference with Steve Finley from Kratos Corporation talk about their new prototype of an unmanned fighter jet for the U.S. Air Force, which is very cutting edge. So tell me a bit about where the company comes from, where you guys have developed the expertise to do ultimately this unmanned fighter basically that you're experimenting with. Absolutely, and it's exciting. Our legacy is in jet unmanned target aircraft. They're intended to, to be used for weapons development and for crew training. Stuff you shoot at, basically. Stuff you shoot at. So basically, a target's intended to be shot at. has to be very inexpensive to satisfy that mission. What we looked at was, if you take that approach and you apply it to the tactical mission, so an ISR or strike mission, what you get is you get an aircraft that's highly maneuverable, highly survivable in a contested environment, and can carry strike weapons, and it's substantially less expensive than a conventional UAV system. So it gave us a real edge. Obviously less expensive than a man fighter, but how do you get you know, this evolved target drone that actually has real sensors on it, has real weapons on it, and you know, do things that a conventional Predator or Reaper or Global Hawk, well that's probably a longer range thing, but right. I mean, it might do for a lower price tag. So two things. Number one, you start with a substantially less cost approach to the aircraft itself. So the basic airplane, if you take the approach that we take on our target systems, it has to be very durable, has to be very inexpensive both to develop, to build, and to operate. And now what you do is you add to that some of the mission systems, but if you go toward, let's call it leading edge technology, not bleeding edge technology, you have very high reliability components that maybe do 90% of the, the maximum technology capability that exists, but at a fraction of the cost. Understood. Because you're not trying to hit the bleeding edge level. Now, what is this not? The Air Force is exploring this as a loyal wingman, as an unmanned sort of escort or adjunct to a manned fighter. What are the limits of its autonomy? This thing is not press a button, go fight the war. No, definitely not. So it does have a high level of autonomy, which means it's waypoint nav capable. You can pre-program it before flight, let it do its entire mission, with the exception of ever releasing a weapon. Always a man in the loop or a mother may I, if you want, for anything related to something that could endanger someone. If there's any use of lethal force, a human being has to say yes or no. Absolutely. Right. Now, what if your communications are disrupted back to the human? Because the human's not physically in it, as in the fighter. Right. So if communications are disrupted, a variety of different options, depending on the mission itself. One option is it deploys a parachute right where it is, it comes down. Another option is it flies back to where it was launched. Another option is it flies back to a predetermined position that says, if we have loss of link for any reason, return to this safe area and either loiter or then pop the parachute and recover. Understood. It doesn't just plow on by itself with this little computer brain. And tell me, what's the Air Force funding you guys to do with this and what the time frame is, what the next step might be? Right, so the original contract was the LCAS-D, Low Cost Attritable Strike Demonstrator Program. That's what we use to develop the airplane and do a number of test flights, and we've got a few more coming up this fall that we'll finish. In addition to that, there have been follow-on contracts that we've gotten to integrate, and I can't talk about the details here, but to, to integrate different mission systems. And think of mission systems as communication systems, relay systems, low-level weapons, for example. Mm -hmm. A full range of opportunities all tied to missionizing this truck platform that we developed. Well, thanks. That's a, a lot of possibilities. Thank you very much. Great. Thank you.